you know, there's, there's two ways of learning, the, the Hebrew and the Greek way. The Hebrew way is, is just repeating, repetitive learning. And the Greek word is all head knowledge. And so, you know, we, we tell the Christmas story every year, every year. And uh, this year I thought we'd do something different, and it's called God With Us. And uh, we've got uh, these books here for you to take, one per family, and go through it. You know, we're going to do four weeks of Advent. Uh, the first week uh, would be Pastor Paul. He's going to do hope. Uh, Wendell's going to do love. Uh, Kenny's going to do joy, and I'll do peace. So, and then we're going to have our Christmas Eve service at 9 o'clock here, uh, Christmas Eve. And then we'll kind of tie it all together. So every week we'll be doing uh, a subject, and we'll be lighting an Advent candle. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to... Uh, just kind of slow down, you know, and, uh, and really, really get Christmas. You know, let, you know there's, there's so much going on this time of the year, and there's so much busyness and, and everything, but, you know, it's just, I just want us to slow down and be so thankful for God being with us. And uh, let's, let's just show that promotion video before we get started. God with us, instead of looking at God with us, God with you, what, it, what does it mean for God to be with you? And that's what we're going to do this morning. And uh, we're going to um, kind of just be a church family this morning. We're going to uh, kind of chill out and, uh, and uh, you want to start the, uh, want to start that for me? Yeah, <laughs> if this don't work, I'm going home. <laughs> there it is. So we're going to just chill out. We're all just sitting around the family room and, uh, and you know, enjoying the fire, just kind of, you know, chatting. And, and, and uh, so we're going to talk about what God means, what it means for God to be with us. And I set an open mic up here, so at any time, you want to get up and, uh, and share what it means for God to be with you, you just feel free to do that, because uh, that's, that's what we're going to do this morning. I have Wendell and Bev up front, you know, and, uh, when they want to get up and share something, and Paul or anybody, you know, just feel free to do that. Because I believe that, you know, Christmas is personal, because Jesus is personal. And, uh, and he wants to, to build a relationship with us. That's what Christianity is all about. And so, you know, in, in the Old Testament, and, and Paul will cover some of this next week in his message on, on hope. You know, hope means to be expecting. And, and so that's what his message is next week. But in 1 Samuel 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord shall uh, give a sign... Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in Matthew 1, 22, it says, 
that there was an angel that spoke to Joseph in a dream. And, uh, and he said, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. In other words, this is the prophecy for years and years past. This is the fulfillment of that prophecy. John said that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Think about that. That Isaiah prophesied that, uh, you know, uh, about his birth and how he was going to die, and, and he said he was going to be wounded for our transgressions. All these prophecies from old time, I think there was 330 of them, John said the word became flesh. The, the living word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. And so this was the fulfillment of that prophecy. And his, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He's, he's with us now. And in the Old Testament, they, God presence was either manifested by a pillar of fire and a cloud. That's how God led them through the wilderness. And he spoke by the prophets, the priests, and the kings, only three class of people. He spoke back then in the Old Testament. So the, the presence of God was external. And uh, all kinds of powerful things happened with God's presence on the outside. They, uh, Caleb had faith in God and his power to overcome the giants and take the country. Joshua, when God told him to, to walk around the walls and, and play music and, and worship God, that the walls were going to fall down, you know, by the power of God and the presence of God, that's what happened. Moses led Israel out of Egypt. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, while they were in the fire, the very presence of God was there with them. And so now we come to the New Testament. And in the book of Acts, when the apostles received the, the Holy Spirit in the upper room, the 120 there, and Peter come walking out of the room they said that, that he was drunk with wine, and he said, no, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that I'm, in the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your young men shall dream dreams, and your old men shall see visions and, 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 and prophesy. And so this was the fulfillment of that, of Christ with us. And no longer it was going to be prophets, priests, and kings, but God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. How many have flesh in here this morning? Sometimes that's a bad thing. <laughs> but God has, has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And then, <clears throat> and then in, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God. Wow. Know you not that, that you are the temple of God. This is New Testament stuff now. God was external, but now he's internal. And he says, know you not that you are the temple of God <clears throat> and that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, <clears throat> which you have of God, and you are not your own because you are bought with a Christ. And then 2 Corinthians 6, 16, it says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And I, he said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will dwell in them, and I will walk with them, and they shall be my people. So my question this morning is, is what does it mean to you that God is with you? 
and that his spirit dwells in you. You know, I was thinking if Billy Graham was alive today and, and, and um, he called you up and, and, um, and he said, John, I'm going to hang out with you today. I'm just going to go everywhere you go. Or Paul, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to be, I'm going to just hang out with you today. I mean, would you do anything different? I mean, Billy Graham's with you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but what? Someone greater than Billy Graham is with you. He's in you. And he walks with you. He goes everywhere you go. Everywhere. I remember one time when I was went to visit somebody in the hospital in St. Louis. And uh, I was looking all over for him and couldn't find him. And uh, I, I was looking for this woman's husband. And, and uh, I walked into the bathroom and in the stall there, there was somebody's feet hanging off there, you know. And uh, I start to walk out and the Lord said, that's who you're looking for. I said, well, I'm just going to try it out and see if this is the Spirit of God, you know. It says, test the spirits. So I, I stood outside and waited, and sure enough, he walks right out of there. See, God was with me right in the bathroom. He, he's with us all the time. He walks with us. Isn't that awesome? He, he's no longer external, and, and he's, he's living inside of us. You know, in the Old Testament, they had 630 laws. So the only way they knew how to stay right with God is by fulfilling all those laws. And the law was just simply a schoolmaster, Paul said, to make them aware they couldn't fulfill that law. You got something to say? Okay, not yet. It's going to be a tag team match. All right, here she does. When Pastor Joe said, what does it mean to you when God is with me? I thought of peace and tra tranquility because peace that passes all understanding. That's what God means when, to me, with me. Amen. Praise God. Awesome. Thank you. So we're just sitting around the fire, just sitting around the living room tonight. <laughs> God with us. Isn't that awesome? You know, I, I, can't, I can't imagine God not with me, you know. Uh, I, I think that would be horrible, uh, you know. I mean, God has been with me through every area of my life, every stage of my life. Uh, ever since I've got, he's, he's been with me, you know, when I didn't have a job, he provided for me. You know, he's been with me when I, I you know, was going through things that nobody could help me with. He's been with me through all those times. And it's so awesome. I mean, that's what Christmas is about, is God with us. I mean, wow. Not Billy Graham, not not Wendell, not anybody else, but God with us. The, the one who created the universe, who hung the stars, and, you know, it's God with us. And so, you know, the Old Testament, they, they used to have to, the only way they stayed right with God is, is by fulfilling the law. Still, it, that didn't please him, you know, because the Bible says the, it's not by works of righteousness which we've done, but it's according to his mercy and his grace he saved us. And so the law was just a shadow of good things to come. And, and so now because we have the Holy Spirit in us and God with us, he's the one who convicts us when we're doing something wrong. And sometimes it goes beyond the law. I mean, God might convict you of, of maybe you know, saying something about somebody who you might not like or something, 
is saying something that might grieve the Holy Spirit and, and, and you feel God saying, don't do that. Well, that's not, it's, you know, it's not written anywhere, but you know that you're grieving the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. So, God with us, what does that mean to you? Come on now. We're just in, hey, what happened to my fire? <laughs> Let's get the fire burning. <laughs> uh, God with me just means a continual feast. Uh, as we sang this morning, it says, you are my feast in presence of enemies. Uh, throughout my life, I've dealt with depression. Uh, it's kind of handed down from my great-great-grandpa or grandma or whoever. It just kind of runs in our family. And... Uh, when I, was, when I was a teenager and I submitted my life to God, that, that depression left me for years. Um, and so it was just amazing that when I found purpose and I found a relationship with God, that he just, that was just gone. Um, now, it tries to rear its ugly head every now and then, and you know, you still struggle with those things, but um, I just love that it said, uh, you are my feast in presence of enemies. Because kind of, when we're met with discouragement, that's when we want to stop feasting. We want to start fasting a lot of the times. And there's time for that, and there's purpose for that, indeed. But it was such an impression upon my heart that, man, we can sit in front of this. There's a scripture in uh, Proverbs 31 that says, the, the godly woman, look, she looks at the days ahead and laughs. And so we, I think we can... Uh, look at the days ahead. We can look at the troubled times and we can laugh. We can have a continual feast because God is with us. And that's what it means to me. Amen. Praise God. Did you ever get the fire going? No fire. Said it was six hours long. <laughs> I ain't been preaching that long. <laughs> so not only is he with us, but he works in us. He, he's working in us. Philippians 2.13, it says, For it is God. Whoa, God. Just think about that. It, for it is God who works in you both to do of his, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You know, sometimes I'm not willing to do of God's good pleasure. Don't look at me all sanctified because I know some of you haven't wanted to, you know. And uh, so it's, he makes us willing sometimes. And he makes us willing to do of his good pleasure. So it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And then in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 9, it says, but we have this treasure. We have a treasure. What you have inside of you, the Spirit of God, it's a treasure of great price that nothing in this world can equal it. It's a treasure put into you by God. We have this treasure. Say this with me. I have this treasure. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a man who goes into a field and he finds a, a treasure of great price and he goes back and he sells everything that he has so he can possess treasure. And so we have this treasure in jars of clay. I think the, the King James Version says earthen vessels. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not of us. <clears throat> we are afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed but not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Amen. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. 
So why can we be afflicted in every way, not crushed, perplexed, not driven to despair, persecuted and not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed? Why can we go through that? God's with us. Somebody's going to get happier up here in a minute and run around the church. <laughs> if it's me, it'll take a while. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, well, whenever, especially after you said that, I was thinking, whenever I think of God with me, like total lifestyle, like my whole life, and every aspect of my life of God being with me, knowing that like this, like Travis was saying, this world is not my home. Like there's an eternity and like to walk in the spirit whenever I'm fighting battles that I'm not fighting that person, it's principalities and powers, that there's more going on than just like what I can see, what I can feel, this, you know, materialistic things. And knowing that there's so much that my physical eyes cannot see going on at one time and knowing that God is with me. So then that's what we talked about at CR on Wednesday, that, um, that God is present with us. And to like try to think of that, like try to physically see our eyes, with our eyes physically see like God is with me in every battle at every time. Whenever I go to work, whenever I'm like frustrated and freaking out, yep. like God is there with me. Amen. And so yeah, that's for me what it means for God to be with me is like ever present knowing that I'm not going to be here forever and that God is with me and that there's an eternity set before me and God's going to be there and I'm going to be able to see him and we're going to, you know, worship him. So. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In Hebrews 7.25, it says, Wherefore he is able to say also save them to the uttermost that come unto him seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. Uttermost means to the greatest possibility or degree. So because he's with us, he's able to save us to the greater possible degree. And it's God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You know, we can't do this thing. In our Bible study, we're talking about Romans, how, how a Christian can still be under the law and be saved. And so, you know, we're, we're talking about how Christ has set us free. And, and the only way we can overcome anything is through the power of God and his spirit. And then in Romans 8, 18 through 27, We can be conquerors, overcomers, because he is greater in us. It says, now in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death nor life or angels or rulers or things present or things to come or creation will able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So because God is in us, we're winners. You know, one thing I like about Donald Trump is that he's always talking about winning. <laughs> we're winning this and we're winning that. And, and I think that's good because, uh, you know, I wouldn't want somebody, you know, up there, oh, we're going to lose this and I doubt if we're going to make it here. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> we're winners. We're overcomers. You know, Paul said we're not of them who draw back. We're, we're the type of people who press on and, and go through the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. We're, we're not backsliders, but we're those that keep pressing on and moving forward in God and taking the ground for the kingdom of God. That's the type of people we are because God is with us. Hallelujah. I like this verse in Isaiah 43, too. Because, listen, this verse is, is I guess, one of my life verses. I, it's always been there for me. And it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, 
that kind of settles it, doesn't it? <laughs> God created you. You didn't, you didn't evolve out of a monkey, you know. I always say that those who, who lean toward that view are their greatest example. So he says, but now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee. See, God formed you. He's, he's taken everything into consideration. That's not my fire. <laughs> so he says that, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. He's, he's bought us back. He's redeemed us. We're, we're now his. We belong to him. I've redeemed thee, and I've called thee by thy name, for thou art mine. Isn't that awesome? You belong to God. And, uh, and then he says this. When you pass through the waters, sometimes things just over flood you and, and you know you're overwhelmed he says but when you pass through the waters listen to this I will be with you so when you go through stuff it says God will be with you and then it says uh, when you walk through the fire or when you go through the waters I will be with you and the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned. Hallelujah, there it is. I was getting cold. <clears throat> when you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle up upon you. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. So when you go through stuff, how many have been going through some stuff? I mean, you know, you go through it. But God is with you. Amen. He's with you. And so if you go through the, the waters and there, you feel like you're getting overflowed, God's right there with you. He's going to bring you out of it. And if you feel like you're going through the fire, God's doing something. He's purifying you and perfecting you, and he's going to bring you through it because he is with you. And you know, because he's with you when you're going through that stuff, you could tell him, say, Lord, I think this stuff, this is horrible. I don't like this. You could express your feelings. You could express your emotions to him because he's with you. He's, the Bible says that he's, 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 a, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's with you. He's, he's that close to you. For I am the Holy One, holy, for I am the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. Because he's with us, you can call out to him. Here comes a God with us. I'd just like to add what he is saying about that. I want to go back a step to God um, doing and willing in our lives. It's not on? Yes. It is on. Okay. This year I have gone through training for Operation Christmas Child, and I can honestly say I know I was called into this work by God. Um, he used other people to do that, but it was confirmed to me beyond a shadow of doubt. And that is an amazing thing to know that you are in God's will and doing what he wants you to do. Having said that, the training that I've undertaken has been extensive. It's taken me a good six months to complete it, you know, on top of working and doing everything else that one does. <laughs> um, but I can honestly say that because he is with me, I've been able to do that. I know without him, I would have been a blob on the floor. <laughs> Amen. Because, just because of, of what I've managed to achieve with him. And following on from that, I just want to add what Pastor Joe is saying, another one of, well, one of our life verses that was given to us way back in, um, ooh, 19, 
something. <laughs> when we were going through a very difficult time with our own business, um, our partners had fled to Australia, leaving us holding the can and, and facing, if all went bad, bankruptcy. However, we had a wonderful, supportive church family. We had two small children at the time, kind of like these guys, about the same age. And the verse that was given to us at that time was Isaiah 41.10, which mm. says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Amen. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Gracious. I will strengthen you. Mm. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. And there are many times throughout Scripture where he talks about upholding us with his righteous right hand. And mm -hmm. I can testify to that over a number of times, and I know some of you others can too. So, yeah, he is an amazing God. Without him, I'd be nothing. That's right. I'd be nothing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That is so true. Thank you, Becky. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can do this without being a crybaby. Without him, oh, let's see. Most of you know that I work at the daycare. Such a blessing, such, such, such a blessing with Ms. Anico. If you've never been there, you should really come and visit. God with me has given me the opportunity to teach his word to the littlest of people who are our next generation every day. There's nothing better to walk in that building. In the last three years, I've been through a big rocky road and sorry, to watch that little kid just I don't know, be go from the worst kid in the room to being the most loving, the most caring child that you can imagine, to tell you Jesus loves you, to walk around and sing that Jesus loves you, to have that parent who doesn't know Christ to come in and say, oh my gosh, my son was singing, Jesus loves me, did you teach him that? Well, yeah, we taught him that because that's what we do, you know. To not only be able to witness to the women that serve underneath me, so God with me is love, peace, understanding, wisdom, and discernment to be able to do that. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Because he's with us, we could trust in him. If he wasn't with us, we couldn't trust in him. You know, and the Bible says in Isaiah 31, 1, it says, Woe unto them that go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses who trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult to the Lord. But because we have God with us, we can trust in him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil, for it shall be health to thy navel. How many want a healthy navel? <laughs> and, mar and marrow to thy bones. <laughs> it's in the Bible. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so we're just sitting around the campfire today so because we we have God with us we could trust in the Lord when things get get rough and tough and and we don't know what's going on we could shift into trust Lord I don't understand this and I don't know why this has happened but I'm going to trust you I'm going to trust you with all my heart. I'm not going to lean on to my own understanding. You know, in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you, and I'm going to believe that you're going to direct my path because he's with us. 
And I, I can't imagine not having God with me, being able to trust in him. I mean, I would have to trust in, you know, instead of trusting God for my finances, I'd have to trust MasterCard. Or I'd have to trust this or that or some other worldly thing. But because I have God with me, he's my provider, and he said he shall provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. Whoa! I mean, brother, the streets are paved with gold in heaven. There's no shortage of provisions. And so he says he'll provide for me, and he's my, he is my provider because he's with me. And David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed out begging for bread. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. And he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed out begging for bread. And I could, I could say amen to that because I've never, we've never been without. God has always provided for us, always, because he's with us. Isaiah 31, 1 says, woe unto them. Oh, I read that. He's with you when you feel overwhelmed. The Bible says, cast your care upon him because he does what? He cares for you. Anybody else? I only got a couple more scriptures. <laughs> now I'll break the mic up. <laughs> So whenever I think of God with us, I think of my intentions. And by my intentions, I don't mean me not sinning, because that really doesn't matter. But I think of this Bible study I sat through the other day, and the instructor talked about, you know, truly living like God's with us. Now, who has God with us? If we believe, right? How many people do we come in contact with that doesn't? our bankers, our waiters, our cashiers, the person driving next to, next to us that we just cut off, all of these people that don't. And the only time they're gonna see God is with us. And That's he talks right. about, you know, a wonderful time to be able to pour into somebody is if you go out to eat. And it just so happened that he invited, or I invited him to go out to eat with me and so we're, we're sitting there, we order our food, and the waiter brings our food, and he goes, hey, you know, we're about to pray over our food. Is there anything I could pray for you for? The weirdest look ever. Just pray for my family, you know, I, and, and he walks off. We prayed for him and talked to him afterwards, you know, and, and it became so real because the Bible study was awesome, but then to see it in real life action. So then me and Kaylee go out to eat, and it was amazing because God orchestrates everything in our life, and he always uses it for our good and those that need to see him because we got to remember that we might know Christ, but the other people probably don't. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there, and Kaylee asked the lady, hey, is there anything I could pray for you for? And she just, you could tell she was about to break down, and she said, just pray for my son, and ran off. I mean, she was gone. We prayed for her, and I just, I was just wondering, you know, what was going on with her son? We pay, we leave. You know, she wrote on our receipt, thank you so much for the prayer. It really meant a lot. And I go to the bathroom. Kaylee's packing the kids in the car, and I was just praying. And I'm like, you know, God, if you have a plan, if you want me to share my testimony with her, you're going to make a way for it. And as I'm walking out, I know that it probably won't happen. I turn the corner from the bathroom, and she's sitting there just staring, blank stare, about to lose it out the window. And I just said, do you mind if I ask what's going on with your son? And she just said, he passed away over the summer, and I just, I can't take it anymore, mm. and I'm, I'm about to lose it myself. And that's why your prayer meant so much. You know, with God's with us everywhere we go, and every time we come in contact, especially with an unbeliever, we have that chance to share him with them. Mm -hmm. We could have easily just taken our food, maybe complained about something like we always like to do and gone on with it. But instead, we were able to share Christ with her and show her that there's a loving God out there that cares for her, that's thinking of her, whether she knows him or not. And I was able to speak with her a little bit and pray with her again. You know, but if we don't share that hope, 
then what's the point? It says yeah. not to take a candlestick that's lit, not to take our light and hide it. Mm -hmm. Why would we want to do that? You know, and the scripture that comes to my mind when I think of God with us is to be kind with everybody as long as it depends on us. Because how many times can our intentions turn south, we can get upset about something, and in the end it really doesn't matter anyway, and we hide Christ from the people that need him most. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, uh, that's a good point because God is in you and he's with you. And then you might go to places where I'm not or somebody else can't go. But because God's with you, he might want to talk to somebody or he might want you to speak to somebody. And, and you just feel a, a compassion and a, and a burden for somebody, you know. And he might want you to pray for somebody. Because God's with you, he's going to reach out to other people through you, right. you know. It might be asking them how to pray for them. Or, you know, I, I remember when, when I was driving a truck in St. Louis and I was minding my own business, driving down the street and making my deliveries, and, and there was a guy in the wheelchair down on Broadway and down, down by the stadium, and, and uh, there was a Taco Bell over there, and, and, uh, and I just felt like the Lord said, I want you to stop and go over there and pray for him. I pulled the truck over, ran over there, and I just prayed for him, ran back, got my truck, and took off. I don't know what God was doing, you know, but he's with you, and he might want you to, to reach out and touch somebody because of his love for them. Come on, brother. <laughs> he's sitting there ready to, Ready to, ready to go. How much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You can go into Exodus chapter 19. When God had brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they'd been in bondage for hundreds of years. And they were estranged from God. Other than just being Hebrew, they really had no relationship with God. They were keeping the law the best they could. And they come to a place called Mount Sinai mm -hmm. where Moses was talked to from a burning bush years earlier. And God told Moses, come up this mountain. And he, he gave Moses specific instructions to cordon off that mountain so those people couldn't come up. The priests couldn't even come up because there was no relationship with God. They were estranged from this God, and God would have had to destroy them because they were not holy people in the presence of a holy God. I want to take you into 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of of reconciliation. That's right. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us this word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. yes. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And this comes down to a very personal relationship. This comes down, ladies and gentlemen, to one-on-one. -on -one. It comes down to one simple idea, one simple premise, that God so loved, so loved this world that he gave his only son for one reason, that we can be reconciled to God. So when we come to Mount Sinai and God's presence rests on that mountain and there's thunder and lightning and that cloud of smoke is there, we don't have to cordon off the mountain. Hmm. We can go up the mountain That's right. and be with God. That's right. God with us is a great idea. 
There are people in this room that I know, and there are people in this room that know me, but we don't have a relationship. And us being together like this is a great thing, but until we sit down at McDonald's for hours and talk to one another, we don't know one another, and we don't have a relationship. God with us is a great idea, but what about us with God? That's what enables us to share. This reconciliation is what enables us to share this. God has given us that ministry of reconciliation. Why? Because we are reconciled. Mm -hmm. Things have been made the way they were in the garden. We've got a relationship with the God that spoke all of this into existence. That quick he made all of this. There are fools in this world who think it was created all because of some cosmic belch. Whew. Educated idiots. But the God that spoke it all into existence wants to take time from his busy schedule to hear from you. To hear from you. The simplest of all creation. He wants to take the time to bend an ear and be with us. Why? Because we need to be with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyone else before we close? So my reading lately has been in the book of Jeremiah. And as you know, he is known as the weeping prophet. Um, why did he weep? Why did he mourn? He mourned because of his people and he knew what was going to come on them. He knew the constant judgment that was ahead. And he was a sign of warning to them as the prophets were to try to get people to repent of their ways. And just this, um, I'm gonna read from it's Jeremiah chapter 1, 17 through 19. Um, it says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. God is speaking to Jeremiah, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. He, he, he would give these, these tidbits of information and he would tell them exactly what to say at exactly the right time. And those prophets, I can only imagine how they felt understanding and knowing that they, they couldn't keep it in. They couldn't keep it inside of them what the Lord had given them because it, it was coming out of them. This is their purpose. And that fear, knowing that they were going up against rulers, officials. But the Lord always reminded them, I am with you, do not fear, I will rescue you. And I thought about, Travis Henderson talked about, uh, we have very basic needs that we have as people. And I thought about just, just the, the faith of a child. What do children need for their walls to come down? Very basic things. They need to know they're safe. They need to know they're protected. They need to know that they're respected and heard. <clears throat> those, those basic things. And I thought, isn't that what we need from our God? As, even yeah. as just bigger kids, as adults, we need to know that we're rescued. We need to know that he's with us. He is there to protect us, mm -hmm. to fight our battles for us. He is there. <clears throat> and this whole, <clears throat> excuse me, just thinking about the course of my life so far and the, the path that he has set before me and, and experiences that I have had, God was with me. God is with me. It's Amen. not, oh, he was with me then and he was with me then. He's ever present. He's all the time. Isaiah tells us that his arm is not too short to save us and that his ear is not too dull to hear us. It's just, that's the power of our mighty, omnipotent, awesome God. He's all the time. He's ever present. And um, 
<clears throat> and he's always there to rescue us when we surrender to him. And so that's a comfort and a peace to my heart, knowing <clears throat> that he is for me. Yep. If he is for me, he's not against me. Amen. And um, when we think about principalities and the enemy, <clears throat> when you were saying something before, it reminded me we really need to understand and know who our enemy is. <clears throat> because when we understand that, but when we know that our God is always with us and That's he right. is bigger, Amen. that he will fight for us, he will protect us. Amen. He will go before us. That's right. That to me is the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. And he, if he is in us, how much more? So Amen. That, that to me serves as an encouragement, but it's that protection we have from our Father who is greater. Amen. Um, he is always with us, and that is a comfort. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So, you know, this Christmas season, you know, all you have to do is tell people when they wonder about what Christmas is all about, you just say, God with us. You know, when I was in high school, I was really small. And so I used to get picked on. But I had big friends. <laughs> and a lot of people quit picking on me because I had big friends. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. A lot of people don't realize what they have and who they have inside of them, especially Christians. So, man, this, you know, you sing those Christmas songs this year, joy to the world, the Lord has come, that earth receive her king. And, you know, I mean, they mean so much to us because God came to dwell in us and he's with us. So we're going to start this next week. Invite some people. I've got door hangers. You got a neighbor you don't like? Put this on his door. <laughs> <laughs> and pray that he gets saved and you'll become best of friends. <laughs> and if you would like to go through this with us as a family, we got these books here. So you can have one for free, one per family. Amen. Let's pray. Yes. Oh, communion. Okay. God with us. Let's get the ushers up here. This is great. This, you know, this really goes along with. I need more. <coughs> Praise God. Just hold on to the elements. We'll pray over them.
morning, if, if you feel like God's presence isn't with you, you know, maybe you've kind of drew back, you're not as on fire as you used to be, you know, fellowship and you don't read your Bible, kind of got away from the things of God. Just like Wendell was saying, you can be reconciled this morning to the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says if, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He wants to redeem you this morning. He wants you to know that he is with you every minute of the day. He wants to be that close to you. And if you feel like you've, you've lost that presence, this morning you could be reconciled. Lord, we thank you for the blood that was shed, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. We thank you that blood was shed for us, that we could live in the newness of life and walk in reconciliation with the God who created the universe. So we take this blood in remembrance of you, and we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, for your body that you laid down for us. Isaiah said that you were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our lawless deeds and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon you and with your stripes were healed. And we thank you, God, for the body and the blood that you gave for us so we can live with the very presence of God in us and through us. Amen. Lord, I just ask as we go from here today, and we start the Christmas season, Christmas Advent, Lord, that we could just come and have a, a renewed understanding of God with us. And Lord, that we would be so touched and so blessed this Christmas season that it would just overflow to our families. They would see God with us. They would see that we're trusting in you and, and we're walking in your ways and your presence is in us, Lord. So I just ask that you would breathe a, a new freshness of the Christmas experience to your people. And Lord, that we would bring people, Lord, that, that don't know you, who aren't reconciled to you, God, and we would see those lives change for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Lord bless you.